fun and informative podcast all about training working dogs? Look no further than the LWDG Pod Dog. This weekly show is hosted by me, Joe Parrott, founder of the Ladies Working Dog Group, and I chat to experienced trainers and experts in the field who will give you helpful tips and advice. Whether you're just getting started or you've been working with dogs for years, this podcast will have something for you. So pull up a chair, pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune in to LWDG Pod Dog. Let us help you build a better bond with your best friend. Welcome to another episode of the LWDG Pod Dog. Joining me today is the amazing Sorrel Miller of On The Peg. Um, how are you, Sorrel? I'm really good, thank you, Joe. How are you doing? Very well. Now, you're here today to talk to us all about caring for country clothing. I know a lot of us are quite depressed at the end of season and we've got all our kit that's been out for the last couple of months that we sort of want to put away, um, ready for next year. Some things obviously stay now because our weather, the weather hasn't left us completely yet. But on the whole, where should we even start when we're thinking about caring for our countryside clothing? There, there are some golden rules that uh, that you can use. At the end of the day, if you look after it, it will last longer and it will it will then also perform better when you're in the field. So it's um, I know it's it's a faff. No one actually likes doing the domestic stuff of, you know, cleaning, washing, all the rest of it. And and, and it really isn't fun. But um, if you do do it, then it will mean that you are warmer, drier and you're having to, having to spend a bit less on uh, on it as well. So to start with things like. Um, you should never use a washing powder. You should always use a liquid. OK, it just means that you get less residue in the clothes. You also need to start looking at the care labels. Um, so, since I started this, I've learned things about. I mean, I was never great at reading the care labels. I'd like I'd look at the temperature, but that was it. But things like if there's a line under the temperature on your care label. So, you know, you have the little picture of the tub and then you have the number in it that tells you what temperature to wash at. If there's a line underneath. That means that you should spin on a lower cycle. Okay. okay. So things like that are quite important for, um, they're better for membranes and cotton as well. It gives cotton less work um, so it doesn't wear out as quickly. So read your care labels. And the other thing is most of this lot doesn't like high temperatures. So we're, we're talking low temperature washing. So yeah, other than that, then it all starts to get depending on what you're washing, whether it's wool-based, whether it's cotton, whether it's silk, whether it's um, stuff with membranes in it. I don't know anything really about care labels, and I'm pretty much like you. I can work out temperature, and should I be dry cleaning this? Sometimes I even get that a bit wrong, especially if you're quite quick. Now, I'm one of those people as well that I don't like tags touching me. It's a bit of a weird thing. So okay. I tend to cut them out as well. So when it comes to oh, no. day, I'll be like, what was I meant to do with this? In you go with 40. But okay, so we need to be looking at our, our liquid um, rather than the sort of powders yeah. um, and just and making sure we're reading it so that, so that we're doing the best for it. Because I suppose those care labels are there to guide us, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing about, about the liquids, just while I think about it, is if you are, do any stalking at all, is you don't want liquid that has any white opticals in it because they, animals can actually see that. It's got little um, reflective bits that make your white look whiter. Right. Okay. Um, but so you make sure that it doesn't have any of that in. If you, It will only be in the, the higher premium end um, detergents, but oh, and no fabric softener. So right. you don't go out smelling like a uh, like a floral bouquet. Um, yeah, it's again, it it doesn't do uh, doesn't do many of the clothes many good. Yeah, because I suppose as well, for hunting gear, they weren't made for us to be smelling like a floral bouquet. <laughs> we need to be smelling as authentic as possible. Um, okay, so obviously there's many different um, materials that our country clothing can be made of. Shall we start with sort of our, our wool products? What what do we need to think about with those? Yeah, so um, the wool stuff will include your tweeds as well, because uh, tweeds are generally um, very wool based. Some of them, uh, the newer ones are starting to have other other fabrics pulled in just to give them a bit more water repellency, that sort of thing. Um, but the best thing you can do with it is to hang it. If it's if it smells a bit, hang it and see if you can get it to to improve that way. Just because if you think about it, wool has a natural self-cleaning property. That's why sheep can wear it for so long. So if you can just hang it, it will get better. If it's got mud on it, let it dry, brush it off with a stiff brush. 
to be honest, I tend to use a bristle hairbrush because that's normally the thing closest to hand. If it's got blood on it, sponge it with cold water, not hot water. If you use hot water, it will it almost sets the sets the blood in. You really don't want that to happen. If I need if I've got stuff that I need to clean, I will normally go in the direction of my dry cleaners just because it's heavy when it's wet and it drips everywhere and you're not you're supposed to dry it flat. So not hang it. And so at that point, you're then having to search for surfaces you can lay massive amounts of tweed out on without the cat sitting on it. And yeah, and then you have to iron it afterwards. And ironing is, yeah, not my forte. I suppose as well, if you can get it through whole season without it getting to the point where it has to be dry cleaned, you can dry clean it and then put it away until next season. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you've got something that, if either dry cleaning is too expensive for you or you have you find that really hard to access you can hand wash it but it would need to be no hotter than 30 degrees you would never scrub it you know how you sort of agitate clothes you, you would never do that you won't don't twist it you don't wring it nothing like that you almost massage the detergent in and only use a tiny bit of it because otherwise you're going to be rinsing forever um so then you rinse in clean water and you you kind of just use pressure to squish it to get rid of the water. Again, don't don't wring, don't twist, nothing like that. Then lay it flat on a towel. But again, to dry it, no radiators, no fires, no tumble dryers, no direct heat at all, no sunlight. Um, that won't do it any good either. So it takes ages to dry. And then you um, you then have to iron it, uh, gentle heat, uh, just normal steam iron. Right. But again, it's it's really labor intensive. So um, if you have the option of a dry cleaner, if it's really, really, really beyond you dealing with with a brush um, and, a, and a cold sponge, then yeah, dry cleaners are the way. So that's wool. Yeah. The, the, the general consensus is unless you really have to leave it alone. Yeah. Let it sort of dry through, uh, air through. Um, what about things like silk? So silk, again, really cool. Um, most and all the scarves that we sell are um, you can you can wash them. It, the the color doesn't completely come out. Um, so yeah, you you can wash them again. No tumble dryers, no radiators. Um, they you want to dry them flat as much as possible because then you need to iron them less. And then it's again it's a cool iron. You, you know I think it's it's just a, the single dot on your iron setting normally that you use for, uh, for silk. Um, so most of the scarves that we sell are in boxes, so you can keep them in that. We also do sell some hangers so that you, if you don't want the creases from the boxes, or you want to be, that you can hang them. So that just keeps them a bit better. Um, but yeah, again, silk, it likes to be treated really gently. I suppose as well, because they're natural products, you know, they, mm. like you said, they weren't meant to be put through our sort of chemical detergents high 1400 spins yeah. so so less is more um what about things like cotton because obviously that's still a natural product yeah so cotton um it i do i do put it in the tumble dryer you're not really meant to because it actually wears cotton out but i have too much going on to be able to deal with that so i put everything in my tumble dryer on a baby cycle but yeah every again low temperature one thing you do need to watch with some cotton products is that they are waxed. So again, low temperature, If and then you will need to refresh the wax every so often. You can get tins of wax, you can get bars of wax, depending on, on what you prefer, um, but it's it's easy enough to, to re-wax. They'll all come with, uh, with instructions with them. But again, sitting, if you're in your car and you've got your heated seats on, do not do that if you've got wax products on. I mean, I, I've got um, some wax trousers that are, are high kilo ones, and I have to remind myself not to put my heated seats on just because it, again, the, the high temperature, it doesn't do any of them any good. I suppose the, like the, the waxed cotton and certainly other wax products is one of those sort of big, big bases. isn't it? Cause I, you know, big bug base for people because I, things like my barber jacket, stuff like that. I'm, they, they drive me mad because they can get really dirty really quickly and then you're sort of left thinking, I have no concept in the world how to, to clean this in a way that's not going to destroy it. Yeah, I sponge, just a sponge. And again, colder water, it, it doesn't need to be cold, but but no hotter than 30. These things are generally meant to just be used, hung and 
but you you know you need to keep the mud off it um, and certainly before you treat it put wax if you're re-waxing it you need to make sure it's clean at that point there's no point trying to put wax on top of on top of mud or anything like that so just sponge it down sponge it down sponge it down until yeah. there's no dirt coming off with the sponge. yeah okay. yeah if, if there's if if you think that they're they're a bit smelly um i i would hang them i really would i think that's the Trying to do things like actually wash wax jackets is is never going to end well. And then is that something in terms of that smell, isn't it? Because, like, if you've had five soggy, dirty, wet spaniels jumping all over, (laughs) then you're lobbing it in the back of a truck because it's soaking wet. You don't want it in in the front of the truck. And then you've got a couple of braces, and it's just, you get home, you're just like, what should I do with it? You know, yeah. fa- families don't really tend to love the smell of it drying in the kitchen. So yeah. it's just finding somewhere to let it air and then sponging it down and making sure that you're thinking about re-waxing it because they can become, you know, people buy waterproof jackets and think, oh, this is going to be waterproof for life. But there's very few products that have sort of that life um, waterproofness. Waterproofness, is that a word? It is now. Um, but yeah, they don't stay waterproof for life, so you do have to put something on there to support it, don't you? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I I get to the end of the season and I I treat everything. I have a day that I'm, and I don't just stop at my shooting stuff. I go through and do my handbags. I do all of my all of my boots. Um, I do everything, anything that is is like leather or or anything like that. I I go through and I have a whole day at it, um, just because you do can sort of get covered in stuff and you end up a bit filthy. Um, but it it does really prolong the life of things. Now I can remember growing up around horses. We had saddle cleaner and then saddle oil. You know, so there's saddle yeah. soap and then saddle oil. Is is there anything like that we can use, or, or is it just better for plain water? Um, so if for leather, yeah. um, I use uh, Renapure for my leather boots. Um, it's it. So you need to really soak it well. Um, with them and then you need to leave them to dry for 24 hours you then ca- so you can't go out in them for 24 hours but that's the best thing that I've found um for things like if I've got stuff that's just looking a bit tired and looks like it needs a bit of TLC for leather I've got some um it's oil based it's it's like a saddle soap but it's it's um it's less wax it's, it's softer than that it's almost like a like a cream based um stuff so and I it Again, it is actually meant for meant for horses uh, or meant for tacks. So I I put that on um, in between. If you see what I mean, it just stuff that looks like it needs a bit of feeding. Yeah. Um. I I will go for that. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to say shooting on the label just to uh, for it to be used on shooting gear. No, because the equine world have been looking after their leather for quite a long time. Um. Absolutely. When you talk about Renfrew there, I love Renfrew too. Um. But there is a caution with Renfrew. It does make things slightly darker, doesn't it? Yeah. Anything that and and any of the the saddle soap, uh, the saddle soap oils and anything that's got oil in it will do as well. And um, the other thing with um with your Renfrew, it's all right if you're just using that. But um, I have heard some stories online of people that have used a different water repellent and then have gone to use then So have used then two different ones and it has caused marks on boots. So you you kind of need to find one and stick to it. It, The the different chemicals mixing don't seem to do very well. And, you know, you'd be then devastated if you spent a lot of money on something uh, and you end up with uh, with white tide marks across it. I've got to be honest, I've been really lucky. Dad, before he passed, bought me a pair of Fairfax and Faber Explorers and my husband bought me a pair of the uh, sort of ankle-sized ones. Um, I should probably know what they're called, I don't. Um, and I, I love both to death and both have Renapur regularly and they have gone slightly darker, but I've got to be honest, I really like the out the outcome of them and they do tend to be those, whereas I don't wear them for fashion, I wear them for purpose and they are literally battered they go everywhere with me when I'm out with the dogs and stuff so I think you know put a renifer on make sure that you know that they're protected and they so far so good they've stayed extremely yeah. waterproof yeah it is good stuff um you just you just need to make sure that you're if you're wearing them a lot you need to make sure that you're doing it regularly well that's a very big plug for renifer <laughs> so if you were absolutely they've done well out of there we have you over here the ladies working dogs and on the peg um before we go off um, clothing and get completely to footwear, 
what about sort of membrane clothing? Because you're starting to see, like my husband is uh, an outdoor instructor. They have so much perfect, lightweight, waterproof stuff in so many different sizes and colors, etc., which are great for outdoor stuff for them, completely waterproof. Don't do so well, I don't think, in the dog world because they're very easily ripped. Um, so there's not so much of a crossover, but you are seeing some of those fabrics moving over, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, um, I think, you see, it goes back to the fact that I don't see many spaniels that actually seem to spend all of their time on the floor. They always seem to be carried. <laughs> They're always up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, so with membrane stuff, again, reducing spin cycle so it's not crushing them and, and creasing them. Um, liquids, not powders. If your membrane stuff gets muddy, that will encourage water to come through it. So you do need to keep your membrane stuff clean. Um, the one that always I always find slightly bizarre is to improve DWR water repellent finishing, you can put them in the tumble dryer. As long as you've checked the care label, but that will help that finish. You can also then get things like um, tech wash. Um, I've got some Harkila wash in there as well. So if you've got stuff that you're finding is, is starting to just to leak a bit, because the, the point of a membrane is that it should let water through. It, sorry, it shouldn't let water through, but it does let you breathe. So if you are, if you know, if you're getting really hot on your when you're beating, that you're not just sort of boiling in a bag and sweating. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, it does quite a, a complicated job. Um, so you need to make sure that you do use the right products on it. And you can get, like, again, tech wash. We use, I think it's called, because Matt goes through the gowns of it, Nick wash. And you can get yeah. them to like, go outdoors and stuff. It's not hard to get. And you just lobber in your washing machine, check yeah. the stuff in you want to clean, and it's, it's job done, isn't it? Yeah, it is really simple to use. Even the most... Um, domestically challenged i think are uh, <laughs> probably safe with that one sometimes other p other parts of our clothing accidentally get stuffed in there and it's i've got to be honest um this is not like an advocation for it but it's never ever affected it it just comes out net i think nick wax and stuff they've, they've all got like a not a funny smell but it's not a like florally washing powder smell things come out smelling like that i don't i don't know if they become more waterproof i don't know if we suddenly got waterproof socks but but yeah what about as well because we've covered most things here what about things like do you know like you can have neoprene gloves and neoprene socks and things like that how do you deal with those i would treat them exactly the same as uh, your membrane stuff so liquid not powder gentle washes don't don't put them on radiators to dry um I have sold several pairs of socks this season to um, ladies whose husbands are probably not ever going to forget to do this, but they've been putting their, they put their socks on radiators to dry and they've shrunk. Um, so it, it has cost several hus husbands new pairs of socks. Um, but yeah, it's, you've just got to leave them flat. Um, otherwise they, yeah, they, it, the, the um, things like the neoprene that have got the, the almost the, the man-made membranes in, yeah, they, they really don't like any uh, any rough treatment at all. And neoprene socks, ladies, just know why you shouldn't also put them on the radiator. It's because if the radiator is too hot, they leave a mark on your radiator and you will never get it off. Um, I can vouch for that one too. Um, but <laughs> it is these things. Like we do tend to think, oh, I'll pop this on the radiator. But radiators in our homes tend to get very, very hot very, very quickly and stay in that hot temperature. Um, so maybe just, you know, like you say, just let them dry naturally. The other thing when we're talking about radiators, I've seen this in a few places, is people think that, you know, rubber, like wellies, pop them on top of the radiator, yeah. everything like that. They also hate it, don't they? Yeah, rubber really is not a big fan. Um, so we sell the Shimo boots. We actually have um, care sponges that we can sell um, that help put the natural oils back into the rubber. Because if rubber dries out, it will crack. Um what you should say is you need to clean them when you get home. Um, no one ever does, but um, they will last longer if you clean them. So, you know, even if it's the next day, if you can get the mud off them and then the majority of the mud will will just brush off, um, but get that off and then use the, the care sponge just to put some natural oil back into the rubber. But yeah, it, they really don't like things. So even um, if you've got your you've got really cold and you've got your heaters on in your car really 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 high and you've got it on in the footwell even that if you've got wet boots is not going to please the rubber on your way home so um it and it definitely doesn't like 
campfires, log burners, yeah, that sort of stuff, again, is, is just a no. So you just need to leave it um, somewhere warm, but not with a direct heat. So it's remembering um, that, you know, the natural rubbers especially, they definitely like to be fed and cared and looked after. Because I suppose, again, we're going back to what we started with, the clothing, they're natural products that have been yeah. um, shaped to suit dust, but they also don't want to be put through sort of chemical things and, and, and forced to have a lot of heat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing is if they if they have got really wet on the inside, I mean, you know, stuffing them with newspaper is, is always a, a good trick for getting the worst of the wet out. Um, but we also have um, sealant boot dryers that you plug it into the mains. It's got two um, bits on wires that go into each boot and that blows out warm air. Ooh. Um, so that they're really good at um, they're really good at drying. Um, I have been known to use those to warm my boots before I put them on in the morning. Well, that, um, that's, a, that's a fascinating, or uh, like, not fascinating invention. I wasn't aware of those. Now I am really glad I'm aware of those because there's nothing worse than a wet welly. Yeah. It's like, it's horrific, isn't it? You know, so if we can find a way of drying the inside without damaging the outside, we're on to a winner. Yeah, absolutely. We'll make an awesome Valentine's Day present. <laughs> I'm going, to, I'm going to tell my husband it's, and it's the, I think for most men it would probably be the gift that keeps on giving because they can use it too absolutely you know? absolutely absolutely sharing is caring <laughs> <laughs> we've talked um about a little bit about the looking after rubber boots yeah. when we talk about like tech boots they need to do a bit of a different treatment again don't they yeah the thing is with tech boots is that um they can be material they can be have bits of leather they can have bits of rubber and so you, you then need to treat all of those bits differently. Um, so um, I've got some Harkeela waterproof fabric spray that is also okay for suede panels. Um, so then, because you don't want water going through either of those. So that just reproofs effectively, um, both the material and the suede bits. If you've got um, leather instead of, instead of suede, you're better off then using um, uh, an oil based, as we were, we were talking earlier, or something like Renipure on that. And then, oh, remember to take your laces out before you reproof it, because otherwise you end up with pits underneath the laces that haven't, or you end up with it all over your laces and then it can make them feel horrible as you're pulling them through, or, or it can make the laces more likely to come undone because they, they slip a bit more. So yeah, they, you then use rubber care for the rubber bits. You need to use a, a spray for the technical bits and the suede. And then any leather bits want, want treating with leather. So it's it's a faff looking after them, but they will definitely thank you for it and they will keep your feet drier and warmer. With these things, if you're going to treat them, though, you do need to leave the boot to dry before you you treat it. You can't come in after a, a day out if they're, if they're wet and then try to treat them at that point. They do need to be dry. Um, we touched a little bit on leather boots about like how we clean them. Uh, is there anything else you think we should think of with our leather boots? No, I think it's it's bearing in mind that they they can get um, they can go darker as as we said when you put the stuff on, but it's it's just doing them regularly because at the point that something goes through and you get wet, it, you'll end up with a tide mark on the leather, and then if you know if you've got them to look nice, then they're they're ruined. So you, I don't think you can do too much on the um, on the looking after, and I would always err on that side rather than the too little. And also the same for if you've got like leather dog accessories. Um, we were lucky enough to be gifted uh, the tether leads leads, and they're leather and they're fantastic. And being an ex horsey person, I quite like holding them because they feel a little bit like holding reins rather than you know. I find cotton, I think they're cotton or normal slip leads, they get quite wet in your hand as well, don't they? They just seem to hold the water obviously all the way down. The leather ones I, I, I quite prefer. But you can clean them using the same way you can do your uh, leather boots. And also, you know, you can get now, a lot of us are buying more and more uh, technical or, or natural made products for our dogs, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. All of these, all of these rules for cleaning stuff um, will apply to to any of uh, the kit whether it's for you or a dog um i think the the thing is is that it's about if you can keep keep on top of it rather than let stuff get absolutely ditched by the end of the season then you'll have far less to do but when you get to the stage that it finally stops raining and you might want to put your waterproof trousers away 
make sure that they're absolutely dry before you stash them. Um, because stuff that's gone away, partly damp, is always going to smell hideous when you bring it out <laughs> next autumn. But likewise, I never put anything away in plastic bags. I like it. I like it to breathe. So I tend to then use my old cotton pillowcases. Wow. So I know that I'll put all of my waterproof trousers and my um, my gaiters will go in one of those, and I'll, I'll wrap jackets and matching trousers up in a in a bag, and then I just I just stack them up in a um, in a chest that we've got ready for next year. I just I, I don't want loads of stuff in wardrobes hanging up. I, I find it easier just to pop it away. I think as well, like you said, if people listen to the advice given, they can get them out a few days or a week before the season starts hang them to let them yeah. air through again and sort of let them increase themselves and, and take back their natural shape but there is nothing worse i think than if you put them away wet or damp and then <laughs> the following season you're all looking forward to a season you pull them out and they, they can some of them can go a little bit moldy they can they can be vile can't they yeah i mean it, it's a great excuse to come and buy more stuff don't get me wrong but um, it gets very expensive if you go along those lines yeah, and I think we also get quite frustrated because, like you said, if you spent a lot of money on a product, you want it to last. And yeah. a lot, I'm sure you get in the same as uh, the technical shop that my husband goes to. If you go back to somebody a season later and they, the first question is asked is, how have you cared for this product? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've had a lady send me a message this morning about um, a pair of boots saying, what I've, I've been wearing them they've been absolutely amazing and all of a sudden they've I've started to get a bit of water coming through and so I'm I'm actually about to uh, go back and, and write a com- have a conversation with her saying have you done this have you done that and I I'm fairly sure that the answer at that point will be I don't think I've done that maybe I need to because they they were brilliant so um yeah it's it's always an interesting one it's always an interesting one and uh yeah it's whether people will admit it or not as well <laughs> Thank you for a fantastic podcast. I'm sure everybody will feel really confident putting away their winter kit and getting ready for the summer. If anybody wants to reach you for a new product or for anything at all, where will they find you, Sorrel? Um, it's on the pegclothing.co.uk. Um, so we're on all social media as well. Um, all the live chat comes into my phone. So if I'm uh, managing to herd children around, then it might take me a few minutes to reply. But uh, yeah, drop me a message. Fantastic. We've put a link to uh, Sorrel's company in the show notes. So if you want to contact her directly, you can use that too. Thank you so much. And we look forward to speaking to you all next week. Thank you for listening to LWDG Pod Dog with me, Joe Parrott. Now we all know training a dog takes time, energy and patience, but our lives can be really, really busy. Don't worry, the LWDG has got you covered. Join us for our free planning workshop where we'll show you how to use short, 10-minute training sessions each day to fast-forward your dog's education. Our experts have years of experience in training dogs and will help you get started on the right foot. Register now and start making progress with your furry friend today. Go to our Facebook page, The Ladies Working Dog Group, and click on the pinned post or visit www.thelwdg.com. Thank you.